Happy New Year and welcome to 2020, everyone. What are your top three cybersecurity threats or concerns for this year? Today, I'm gonna to share with you my top three, and then I'm gonna dive deep into one that I know we're gonna see a significant surge in attacks this year, and then I'm gonna end with a demo using a social engineering tool to harvest credentials that could be used for spear phishing campaign. With that said, let's get right into it. For 2020 and this decade, we're gonna see an explosion of innovations that will reshape our lives and transform our society in positive ways. We're gonna see advances occur in AI, quantum computing, blockchain, cryptocurrency. Now, these same developments from a security perspective also introduce risk and cause negative societal disruptions. With that said, my first concern for 2020 has to do with supply chain attacks, also known as value chain or third party vendors. Now, let me explain to you how that works. Here is your typical threat actor, <laughs> a retired grandfather from a forgotten corner of the world, exploiting a vulnerability exists in a supplier's hardware or software, and then infiltrates into a customer's network. Now, we've seen this happen with the Equifax a uh, breach where they failed to patch the Apache Struts vulnerability. Threat actors target suppliers, particularly uh, smaller organizations, because they know that they don't have the same level of security controls in place like those of larger organizations. Some measures that customers are doing to mitigate the risk, including requiring their vendors to perform self-assessments and gaining more proper visibility and oversight of the vendor's risk by conducting on-site audits and penetration testing, particularly for those in the cloud and managed security service providers. Additionally, some customers who share common vendors have teamed up to conduct reviews and ongoing assessments. For example, American Express, Bank of America, JP Morgan, and Wells Fargo Bank created a vendor assessment service called TrueSight. Now, my second concern has to do with insider threats. These are malicious threats that may involve fraud or the theft of intellectual property or the theft of sensitive information or just simply sabotaging computer systems uh, from people within the organization. Now, there are two types of insider threats. So let me explain to you those two types. The first is malicious insiders. Here we have a set of innocent looking folks, but don't let their looks deceive you. These are people who misuse or abuse their role and access with the intention of inflicting harm on an organization. The second is negligent insiders. These are people who commit mistakes intentionally or unintentionally that put the organization at risk. So what can we do about it? We can implement administrative controls such as least privilege access, separation of duties, and have proper candidate screening and hiring controls in place to deter and prevent insider attacks. So my third concern has to do with malicious software, also known as malware. Now malware is a term that describes any malicious code or program that is harmful to a computer system. Now you may have heard of virus, worms, trojan, spyware, adware, as well as ransomware. Now they are all designed with the intention of stealing, deleting, or encrypting data. Also, they modify and hijack computer functions, including spying on your computer's activity without your permissions or your knowledge. Now, for the rest of this video, I'm gonna focus on ransomware because I know we're gonna see a huge spike in attacks this year because the cyber criminals have figured out a proven and profitable business model with ransomware. Now, the cyber criminals are more sophisticated, they are more innovative, and they are more creative with their attacks. Now, gone are the days of the tactics of spray and pray blast 
phishing attacks. Now, there are more targeted, there are more tailored attacks going forward. With that, I'm gonna spend the rest of the video explaining to you what ransomware is, how it works, and what you can do to prevent your company or your organization from falling victim to ransomware. What is ransomware? In layman's terms, ransomware prevents users from accessing their system or personal files and demands ransom payments in order to regain access. There are different types of ransomware, such as screen lockers and scareware, but I focus mainly on the encrypting ransomware as shown here on the screen because it is effective and it has proven to make a profit for the cyber criminals. With the new business model, once the cyber criminals gain a foothold into an organization's network, they will first exfiltrate the data, search and delete any backups, and then encrypt the files. With the data on hand, they will put pressure on organizations to pay ransom to obtain the decryption keys. If the organizations don't comply, they will threat to publish the data, expect the ransoms or cyber extortion amounts to be much larger as we've seen it with Travorax. The ransom was 6 million versus tens or hundreds of thousands uh, when compared to previous years. We see more attacks targeting state and local government organizations, hospitals, and schools as they are the most vulnerable and ill-prepared to respond. So how does ransomware enter into an organization? There are different methods to infect an organization with ransomware. The infection factors include installing and downloading infected software and applications, accessing infected external storage devices or compromised websites, but the go-to method of attack is still social engineering, opening email attachments, clicking on links from untrusted source. So what can organizations do to prevent and prepare for ransomware? One, back up critical data and have backups ready to go. Ideally, store backups in a different locations uh, with high-level encryption and multi-factor authentications since ransomware is known to target and delete backups. Two, patch and update software, particularly legacy systems that are susceptible to attacks. And three, end user is still the weakest link, so bolster training and awareness program. Finally, four, this is critically important, having an up-to-date business continuity and disaster recovery plan. Conduct tabletop crisis exercises to practice and to prepare as states here with the six Ps. Proper planning and preparations prevents poor performance. Does your BCDR plan take into the consideration of pain or no pain situations? For example, law enforcement advises against pain ransoms as pain incentivizes cyber criminals to conduct more attacks. Given this advice, Will your organization pay ransom? Before you answer this question, take these two bridges with different approaches into consideration. First, when Baltimore City was infected with Robinhood ransomware last year, it refused to pay the $76,000 ransom's demand with the end result of being unable to work around the encryption and then spending $10 million in recovering efforts, and then lost $8 million in revenue. Two, Jackson County, Georgia, was hit with the Ryuk ransomware, and they paid $400,000 for the decryption keys. If they didn't pay the demands, it would have taken them months to rebuild the systems from scratch and would have cost them more than $400,000. While not paying is a valid advice, it may not be the right decision for every organization. It is important to separate the emotion when under pressure to making the decision. The decision must be what is the best for the organization, what is the most cost-effective and efficient solution to restore business back to operational. Now, I'm going to demo how a cyber criminal might use a social engineering tool 
similar to the one in the demo to harvest credentials. Uh, then they use the information gathered to craft a targeted spear phishing campaign. For this demo, I will be cloning a website and harvesting credential that could be used for a spear phishing or social engineering campaign. I've already set up a virtual environment for Kali Linux. I'm choosing Social Engineering Toolkit, selecting Social Engineering Attacks, Website Attack Vectors, Credential Harvester Attack Method, and then finally, the Site Cloner option. Since I'm on a local host, I will be using this IP address shown here instead of a, an external address. Now you can also check your local host IP address by doing a IF config as shown here on the screen. The URL that I want to clone for this demo is Facebook. I'm copying Facebook URL and pasting it here. This page provides a summary of the IP address and the site clone cloning information. And I'm going to hit return to acknowledge and continue. Here it shows that any hit of any credentials will also be displayed in the bottom. In this scenario, I've created this email ahead of time and I can use it to send it to my target. I replace the IP address with the with Facebook URL. Now, assuming that my target received the email and clicked on the Facebook URL, it will take her to the sign on page through my IP address. Notice that the IP address shown here, it's my localhost. If my target didn't pay attention to the malicious URL, she would then enter her email and password to try to sign into Facebook. <laughs> Only if I could type. She would then click login. Here, I'm going to show the password that my target provided. Her username is this is a test only, and this is her password. Now, it'll take her back to the login screen, but notice that now it has the correct legitimate Facebook URL. My target could be thinking that she had entered the uh, wrong username or password. In the background, her credential has been logged, and you can see it right here. Now, I can use this credential to log into her Facebook account and gather personal and sensitive information that I can use for spear phishing or social engineering campaign. Now, there you have it my top three cybersecurity concerns for 2020. You have the supply chain attacks, insider threats, and malicious software. What about you? What are your top cybersecurity concerns for 2020? I'd like to hear more about your comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please do so. Now until next time, let's connect collaborate, and make positive changes. Take care.